Why do you think some talented and lovable child actors having have, have trouble making that leap, crossing over, and sometimes turning on themselves? Um, I think child actors have difficulty transitioning to being an adult uh, for a number of reasons. One, depending upon how famous they were when they were kids and how they were treated and how indulged they were, um, is very dangerous. It's dangerous to, if you're just a parent, to treat your ch children with kid gloves, let alone imagine all the the luxuries a, a celebrity child gets and then becomes accustomed to it. And then, you know, you saw me in Christmas Story. I was not a handsome kid. I ended up getting this big, like I hit the stage. When I was a little kid, I had a little nose. I had big eyes. I had like these cheeks, chubby cheeks. I hit a certain age, I was like, I got the thing came out, I had the braces. You know, everybody's got this period in their life where their hormones are just trying to make them as asexually and unattractive as possible. Um, so to go through that and to continue working is, is really difficult. Um, and then I guess it also depends, there's construction outside so I might speak up. It also depends what it is you want to accomplish because if your goals when you were a kid was to be uh, doubted, uh, no, not doubted, uh, fawned over is the word I'm looking for, to be fawned over and pet in the head and praised, well then as soon as you're off set and not, and not on the red carpet, then no one cares. And if your show ends, then the people are like, oh, yeah, whatever happened to you? If your job is to, if what you find satisfaction in is the process of it, then you're gonna keep on pushing forward. and. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I uh, shoveled walks. I grew up very, very poor. Um, so when I was like six years old, I was shoveling uh, snow off of neighbors' walks for anywhere from 30 to 50 cents per pop. I was delivering newspapers. I was working as a stock boy. I worked in kitchens. I worked at a guy named Tobe, who was a Schmada's dealer. Um, I worked for my dad, uh, painting and cleaning and brooming. Um, and then I got into martial arts when I was 10, 10 to 11, uh, a couple, two, three years there, I was doing fencing and I got into Taekwondo and I got into boxing and then I uh, had a bunch of uh, amateur fights and then I traveled. But the thing is, I like being in the gym. I like being in the dojo. I like doing the bag work. I like doing the groundwork. I like getting stronger. I like doing the job. I like eating, but I like cooking the meal. I like being in the kitchen using the knives, cutting the stuff up, and making it look cool, and putting new flavors together. I like the process. I don't just want people to go, yay, you, here's food. I want to actually make it. So I took that attitude towards working, and it wasn't about the red carpet for me, because in Canada, I never got a fucking red carpet. Um, and I think that was a saving grace. And I, I think, again, I'll reiterate it, Make your own stuff. I have a friend of mine, James Cullen Bresick. This little bastard is 22 years old and has directed 12 movies. Dick. And if you're watching it, James, you're a dick. And he his first one, I mean, he's 18 years old getting it out there and he used social media to launch it as high as he could and he's calling all the film festival and like, I'm an 18 year old filmmaker, take pity on me. And he made a pretty crappy movie, but guess what? They all wrote him up, and he got on Amazon. It was like in the top 30 of all uh, movies, all. And his movie, not so bueno, but the fact is, he got it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it. And, because he did it, because he didn't stop, he didn't wait for someone else to give it to him. And I think with younger actors, when they're trying to transition, if they, sorry, I mean hit that, when they become, Back in my day, especially I'm, I think what you're referencing is the different Strokes kids and the Corey Feldmans and the Corey Hames and the people who ended up being kind of disasters and doing cocaine and do, getting heavily into the drugs and, and um, making bad decisions. And I, I know exactly why they did that. And uh, I didn't have that success when I was a kid. I, I would say the closest I got to that was really when I was doing Titus and I had a 500 person audience. and in the last season of Titus, I was like a fucking beetle. Like I had kids lined up, boys and girls, because the character was kind of androgynously sexual towards both genders, which is awesome. And they're like, we love you! And I'm like, I'm married, but thank you very much. Um, and 
I do remember like the high of that live performance being so great and wanting that not to stop and starting to drink too much. Because at that point, I wasn't writing. I wasn't pursuing financing. I wasn't going on lynda.com and learning how to edit. I wasn't going to the National Association of Broadcasters show in Vegas and talking to everybody and asking about how software works and asking questions. I wasn't buying tools. I was buying toys and hoping things were gonna work out for me. No one taught me. I had to figure it the fuck out. And I wanted that high to continue. And so I click, 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 click. I click, 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 click. And I wasn't, I'm not a, you don't get smarter getting drunker. You don't get anything else accomplished. You talk about it. Dude, we showed you that thing we were talking about. You're awesome for that. And then you wake up and you're like, what happened? Oh, that's gross. Did we shoot that movie? No, we just talked about it. Crap. So I understand why they did that in the 80s, those kids. And because they couldn't grab a camera or they felt they couldn't grab a camera. But now cameras and editing, and editing gear and a portal for distribution being YouTube or whatever you want to try, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's affordable. You can borrow it. You know, if your buddy has a camera and you don't, paint his house, borrow his shit. Hard work will get you everything you need, pretty much. And then talent and more hard work gets you the next way. And I, so I hope nowadays that people can feel the freedom to transition and still feel creative. Like, I made Don't Blank. I'm an actor for 35 years now. I'd like to be acting the rest of my life, but more importantly, I'd like to be creating for the rest of my life. And if I'm not in front of the camera because my name in front of the camera is not bringing money to the, to the production, then okay, let somebody else have that position because that's respect for my investors. But I also get to be creative. My life doesn't end because I'm not on the red carpet or I'm not the one being interviewed. I'd just be as happy asking the questions.